And maybe I would like to finish this interview with some questions on your personal experiences uh, with, uh, with IHL as a, as a practitioner. Uh, I know that you worked uh, with the RCRC and also you worked with the Swiss Army. So it would be interesting for the students to know more about uh, what you did uh, as, as, a, as a member of the RCRC and as working for the, for the Swiss Army. What's, what, what was your role in, in, this, uh, as in, this, in this field? Yes, thank you. In, in the ICSC, I've been at the end of the 90s for two, three years. Uh, at the, initially, it was just a question of um, passing some summertime, and I asked my professor Abisab to find me somewhere work. And uh, after three weeks, he came back towards me and told me the ICSC needs somebody for something you know very well in Belgium, namely the Dictionary of International Law under the lead of Jean Salmon. I participated therein for the definition of the different terms. So I did a basic research on all the terms of IHL except neutrality, uh, figured out all the sources, the jurisprudence, the various definitions existing, and prepared that for the professors who should do the definition. Then unfortunately, no one except Schindler for neutrality did the job. And finally, I finished defining myself and doing all the work for the dictionary. Then the ICSC kept me for um, some, something more than one year in the legal services of the organization. I've never been on the terrain, but I was in Geneva and I've done legal work for the, for the ICSC. Um, for instance, questions relating to detention and human rights law in its relationship with IHL and different other tasks which were just at the time important. To give you one example, I was one of the persons who participated to elaborate the position of the ICSC on the war crimes provision, Article 8 um, of the Rome Statute. So when the ICSC had its delegation in Rome, we had prepared all the material for it, and I was one of the persons behind that with Knut Dermann. So we, I have read through all the, all the cases of criminal international law since Leipzig, and I did that for the ICSC. You see, therefore, that my work was a quite academic legal work in the ICSC, but I also participated in the weekly meetings of the ICSC where you have the news from the terrain. And it was interesting to learn what type of legal problems came up to the legal division from the, from the ground. That was, was my task at the ICSC, fundamentally a task of academic legal nature, legal counseling. I then left the ICSC and I never really again worked for them, but I have been in expert groups of the ICSC. I did not any more work for them because I had enough to do in the academy and uh, I had no spare time to go back to the ICSC. For me, the ICSC was just a time before I could have an academic post. The second task, the Swiss Army, that came much later in my life. I was 39 or 40. I did not have uh, any military service experience and I was incorporated into the army at an age which is almost canonic for that, namely mostly 40 years. It was because of my expertise of IHL that the Swiss Army was uh, interested in my services. And I'm still in this section today. What do we do in the section? We do different things. Our main task is to be the legal counselor for the Swiss Army. So it's the legal section, the legal section on IHL or law of war. And uh, we try to further the training of uh, IHL in the courses of the armed forces, of the Swiss armed forces. But we also try to strengthen the knowledge of IHL in armed forces abroad. Hence, for instance, the section invites every two years military commanders of mo most different troops, not the most high ranking commanders, but commanders of all over the world for a training in IHL, which is one intense week of training. So there are many activities of this type which, where we try to foster and further and push forward the knowledge of IHL. Training dissemination, if you want it very shortly. Conversely, there is a very interesting aspect for me in that section. Namely that I'm in contact with military personnel, not the Swiss one, which is not very interesting, but the foreign military personnel coming from uh, countries engaged on the ground of warfare. NATO commanders, we had American commanders, we had Australian commanders, all people who had been in the battlefields. 
And these people come to the section to train us, because in Switzerland, fortunately, we don't have armed conflicts. They train us by telling us, for instance, the American soldier, or rather high-level lawyer, told us how targeting was performed in the US Army. And he showed us that very concretely with images, how he would target, how he would select the targets, a sort of Google Earth map we had in front of us. And then he, he scanned on certain areas and he showed to us what considerations are relevant to select the targets. That was quite impressive. And therefore, we have also these type of thing. And as you know, IHL is always balanced somewhere between humanitarian concerns and military ones. When you are an academic lawyer, you know quite well the humanitarian concerns, especially as an international lawyer, and you are attached to them. When you are in the service of the army, you learn the concerns of the military personnel. And sometimes they tell you things which you just never reflected in that light. And that gives you a better experience for the proper balance. Because if you have IHL only on the humanitarian track, the military personnel will just not take it seriously. If you have an IHL which is more equilibrated and where the concerns of everybody are understood and factored in, then you have something which is more workable. And for me, it is extremely, extremely worthwhile being in the army because I learn all that military side of the coin of which I had, frankly, no experience at all. So these are my activities. I also make some legal counseling for the army. So sometimes now it's about autonomous weapons. I will be in a commission on that for the Swiss Confederation. The army sends me there as an expert. I'm not an expert of autonomous weapons, but I know to some extent IHL, as you see. And therefore, I'll try to do something there. there and I will learn something on technical matters. That, is, that, that are my activities in the context of IHL. Uh, so, thanks. So, I, I, I agree with you that it's very enriching to, to have this uh, experience with uh, the army because I'm, I'm teaching to, to uh, officers, to military officers, and uh, it's very interesting to have their, their feedback when I'm, I'm teaching the, the, the principles and the, I, of, of IHL. So, so, many thanks, Professor uh, Robert Cobb. Many thanks for having accepted this interview, for having accepted to, to share your experience. And so, uh, Let's see uh, uh, if you uh, we have reaction. I'm sure that we have reaction to, to your interview and we'll see that in the forum. And, and your answers will be very important for students to, to, to make the, the assignment that you have just after this chapter. So many thanks. Uh,